In my last video, I talked about JSON Web Tokens, also known as JWTs. In that video, I went over the basics of what a JWT is, and I completed the first lab in the Portswicker Web Security Academy under the JWT section. That was a very simple lab that didn't take a lot of work to solve, so I thought I would do at least one more in the JWT section that's a little bit more complicated. So in this video, I'm going to go over the third JWT lab in the Web Security Academy, JWT Authentication Bypass via Weak Signing Key. The instructions of this lab say, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions. It uses an extremely weak secret key to both sign and verify tokens. This can be easily brute forced using a word list of common secrets. To solve the lab, first brute force the website's secret key. Once you've obtained this, use it to sign a modified session token that gives you access to the admin panel at slash admin, then delete the user Carlos. So for this lab, the main thing we need to do is crack the signing key. So as usual, I'm going to access the lab and open it in a second tab. And once that tab opens, I'm going to copy the URL. Then I'm going to open up Burp Suite and open Browser under the proxy. And I'm going to paste that URL from the lab into our browser. Now I'm seeing that traffic from the lab in our Burp Suite proxy. So once again, we see this little blog that's going to be our target. And we have a, a My Account page. And when we click on that, we see a login page. So I'm gonna log in with the credentials that they gave us in the instructions. And according to the instructions, our goal is to access the slash admin panel and then delete Carlos. So I'm gonna go up to the URL bar and I'm gonna put in slash admin and see what happens. So just like the lab we did in the last video, it says the admin interface only available if logged in as an administrator. But we can take a look at this git request that was used to access the admin panel and we can right click it and send to repeater. And once we have that request in the repeater, we can take a look at the JSON web token. And before we go any further, I wanted to mention a couple little things about JWTs in general. If you are testing an app that is using JWTs, there are a couple things that you should be looking for that maybe, depending on what it is, might not be worth like a big exploit for a major finding, but it's still worth calling out in a pen test report. The first thing is you should just look at what content is being put in the JWT. Because sometimes you do find some user information in there and it might not be something major like a password or anything that's going to lead to a major exploit, but it could be some sort of identifying information like maybe an email address or a phone number or just some sort of information from the user that they might not want exposed in the JWT. Again, that's probably not going to be a major finding, but it's just something you could call out in a report as maybe like an informational or something to put in the appendix or whatever it is. Another thing to look for is the expiration of the JWT. In the last video, I mentioned this JWT editor extension, which makes it easy to change things in the JWT really quickly. But there is another extension that you can use that I've used before, and that one is just called JSON Web Tokens. And sometimes I find this one a bit easier just for inspecting things in the JWT and not necessarily editing it. So to use this, you can either just look at this tab, which is kind of confusing because they use pretty much the same title for both tabs, but you can also just highlight it and then right click and then send to JSON Web Tokens tab to decode. But either way you want to do it, it has this little check at the bottom that looks at when the JWT expires, but it tells you over here the actual time and date that the JWT expires instead of using this epic time that is used by the JWT. And depending on how long they set their JWT expiration, this might be something worth mentioning in a report. I've seen JWTs and apps that expire like 24 hours later. Sometimes I've even seen them up to a year or longer, which by themselves isn't something that's going to be exploited, but it could expand the attack service of an app, so I think it's something worth calling out in a report. But anyway, getting back to the lab, our goal right now is to brute force the signing key of the JWT. So to do this, we're going to copy the JWT, and we're going to use a tool called Hashcat to brute force the key to that JWT. So if you look back at the instructions, they actually provide a word list of common secrets, which is very convenient. But if you're doing this in a real world scenario, like a pen test or something, and you didn't have this word list provided for you, there are plenty that you can use. You can find them on GitHub, or if you use like Kali or Parrot, they usually have some word list included in those builds. So you just have to do a little bit of research and find a good list for you to use. So now that we have our secrets list, we're going to run hashcat a zero dash M 16500, our JWT, and then the path to our secrets list. 
You can look into the documentation for hashcat to see what all these things mean specifically, but basically dash A means we're going to do a straight attack mode and dash M is the hash type and 16500 is to denote that it is a JWT. Again, feel free to look into the hashcat documentation to figure out all the different kinds of attack modes and type of hashes you can use and all those kind of things because there's a lot of different options for hashcat. But now that we have our command written out, we're going to hit enter and let it run. So that took about a minute or so to run, and that now that it's finished, we can scroll up and look at the results. We see that there is our JWT that is cracking, and it found the secret was secret one. So now that we have that key, we need to go to the decoder tab, and we need to encode that key in base64. So we just paste it into that first field and encode as base64. Now that we have our key, we need to go to the JWT editor keys tab and we're going to click new symmetric key and we're going to click generate and in that K field we're going to replace it with that encoded value that we just found and we click OK. So now that we have our key created we can go back and look at our JSON web token and we see that there's this subfield and then it has our username and we can try changing that name to administrator just like we did last time and if we do that and send the request we just get that admin interface only available if logged in as an administrator, even though we have that field set as administrator because it has that sign-in mechanism on the JWT. But because it was using such a weak key and we were able to crack it pretty easily, now we can go to sign and then we can set the sign-in key to that key that we just created. And then we can click OK. And you may have noticed that the JWT changed when we did that. And now if we send that request, now we get access to that admin panel and we see that there are the users and then those delete buttons next to each user. So just like in the last lab, our objective is to delete the user Carlos. So if we scroll down, we see that the URL to that delete button is slash admin slash delete and then the username that we want to delete. So we can copy that and then we can paste it in here in our get request. And now we can send that request and then it says 302 found, and then we follow redirection. And now, user deleted successfully. Congratulations, you solved the lab. So again, this lab wasn't that complicated, but it did go into a little bit more of how JWTs can be attacked by using the weak signing keys that sometimes are used for them. And we also got to use Hashcat to brute force that JWT, and I don't think I've actually used Hashcat in a video before. And we talked a little bit more about what kind of stuff you should look for when you see JWTs in an application that you're testing. So I hope all of these things are useful for you. If you see a JWT in an app you're working with, maybe it will kind of trigger things to look for, and maybe that will help you be a better pen tester. Let me know if there are any other topics in the Web Security Academy that you want me to cover, or if you want me to do another JWT lab or whatever you're interested, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Also, just one little note before I go, I recently launched a new website where I'm planning on uploading some written versions of some tutorials and more instructional content. The first entry is up now and I'll be uploading a second entry within the next few days. So if anyone wants to check that out, it's coresecure.blog and I'll have a link down below.